Yellow Man, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Yakuza 4 Remastered. Last episode, we completed the saga of Taiga Saejima after his climatic showdown with his long lost, thought to have betrayed him blood brother, Goro Majima, and we learned a pretty shocking revelation about the, uh, the plot regarding Taijima's, um, um, old Ma Yakuza boss, and who specifically was in charge of that. Like, who was behind his particular misfortunes in that chapter, and the possible nullification of the sacrifice he made 25 years ago. One Kazuo Shibata. Yeah. That's a pretty big deal. I think we're going to get back to what that's about right now. こんな今日は誰かの葬式ですか。いや。<笑> あなたと西島は今日出所直後の上野義晴を都内のラーメン屋で襲うそういう計画ですよね。実はあの計画ちょっと問題がありましてね。予定を変更させてもらうことになりました。どういうことや? Yeah, we already know the song and dance from Zero. Majma is intercepted before he can join in on the hits and is eventually tortured to the point where he loses his eye. What is it? Oh, it's not a mistake. This is what you have to do with the Dojima Group. Shibata, please tell me. So, the plan of the Yoshihara Shugeki あれは道島組が都内の島拡大のため計画したのがことのこったんです。その計画を道島組は笹井組へと託した。そこまでは知ってますね。なあ。せやから道島組の俺と笹井組の西島がやることになったんや。そうです。でもこの計画何かおかし
笹井組の組長である笹井がこの情報を仕入れた張本人ですさ笹井のおじき笹井は上野清和会とつながっている笹井は登場会に上野が現れる場所の情報を流しわざと我々が襲撃するよう促したどどうしてそんなことを戦争を起こす気なんですよ戦争笹井は登場会が上野清和会に手を出すきっかけを作り出すことで逆に上野清和会が登場会相手に戦争を仕掛ける理由を作り出そうとしているんです、うん、そないなことして何の得になるさあそこまでは分かりませんただ上野清和会にとってはこれ以上ない戦争の大義名分が出来上がる何せ先に手を出したのは登場会なんですからねきっと笹井は上野清和会側の内通者と手を組み戦争の事態収集に動くそうなれば笹井は一躍登場会の幹部候補として名が売れるそんなとこでしょう馬島さん今日の襲撃道島組の人間であるあなたは言ってはいけないこのまま襲撃に向かえば道島組長いや島野さんにも迷惑をかけることになってしまいます真島さん私の話聞いてますか兄弟はもう向かってねえや。いや、Now we're at the point where we saw this particular conversation in Yakuza Zero. あんた俺に兄弟裏切れっちゅうかこのまま見殺しにせっちゅうか落ち着いて落ち着いて俺は行く。たとえどんな裏があってもかまへん。俺にとって、サイジムはたった一人の兄弟なんじゃ。真島さん。でもそれじゃあ,あなたの。It's really, they're really emphasizing the fact that the reason that this really is just there is no way for two people to take out the family like that. And that is how it go down in real life. So I, purely from a practicality standpoint, I understand why.、Um, Shibata wants to stop Goro. But the way it's being done here is really just exposing. An, yeah. Like, man, what a complete personality shift he did. Then again, however, he is in the present day, I'm not really sure if. I'm not sure if he actually changed character. He could be hiding his true colors. He could be. Shibata! いいか、俺たちは親父の命令であんたをここに監禁してるわけだが殺すなとしか言われてねえつまりだ暴れたあんたを落ち着かせるためなら多少の傷を負わせても何にも問題ねえってわけだ例えば目ん玉の一つくらいだったらなさあ謝れ泣いて俺に詫びろでけへん何俺が頭下げれんのは自分の親父と自分が認めた男だけそれじゃ覚悟はできてるってことだな目ん玉一つくらいでお前には頭下げんああそうかよ
Oh. Majra did all that before finally succumbing. Jeez. But now we had that brief interlude. Let's get introduced to the third playable character in this game, shall we? お前らよし。何聞いてあんだ。なんすか。一つだけ忠告しておいてや。一人で何を嘆いてるのか知らないよ。妙なことに首突っ込んでると。親父さんの2名前になるぞ。なんだ。何見てんだ。いや。別に。ご忠告どうも。見回りですよ。ケイラは生活安全課の基本ですから。何が見回りだ。どうせ違法営業店を脅して口止めに賄賂もらったりしてんだろうが。まあ、ご想像にお任せします。それじゃ。誰が。So, right. I'm still thinking about Sasai being the one that actually betrayed. Yeah, okay. Sasai being the traitor is probably the one thing that uh, would. Um... Sorry, I'm just not really interested in what Time More is up to right now. Sasai being the traitor, it's got to be the bruntest and most brutal truth that Taiga could ever hear right now because his own boss saying it's about to fall. His own boss. Remember that Taiga cried when he saw Sasai again. That's how much Ty that's how much Sasai meant to Taiga. So that now that Majra explained all that, it's gotta weigh very heavily on the guy's mind. It's like, um, again, bring up Kiryu. How Kiryu probably felt when he first saw the picture of the man that would eventually be named Joji um, Kazuma. Turning out to be uh, Daigo's near assailant. How the, he must have felt the questions. Even if he knew in the back of his head that people don't come back from the dead, there still had to be. Find the informant. Sure, whatever. So, right now, I feel like the heart of this game, the heart of this game's plot, is Saejima first, and I'm gonna say Akiyama second. Like, the meat of the story comes from what Taiga did 25 years ago and how it's coming back to haunt everyone today. And Akiyama mostly got involved because he was at the wrong place at the wrong time.
Kiryu... I'm not talking about Kiryu yet, because I know we're gonna, he's going to be coming up next, but... I'm just trying to figure out what exactly... How exactly this Tanimura guy is going to become relevant at all. Because so far, all I got is... Cowboy cop that likes to gamble a lot, and it's like... I'm going to grade your story on a how much do we need to change in order to replace you with either Makoto Date or um, Karu Sayama. Do we re did, did we need a third cop character in the Yakuza franchise? Did we? And that's why I'm being very critical of Tanimura. Now, right now, the game expects you to find a way to get silver plates for Tanimura to progress the story, which means they do expect you to do the honorable yes, thing and just gamble enough to get the plates. But we seriously do not have the time for that. 40,000 yen, that's a lot to start with. Then again, there's literally no point in the fake silver plates existing if they didn't have a purpose anywhere. And, um, I can't play Mahjong to save my life. Game calls you out for trying to get fakes, but it's okay. Mm -hmm. Mm Okay, so you run faster than, um... I guess the police are still out here because they're looking for Taiga. That's cool. Alright then. Do, 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 do. Now, since this guy's playing a cop character, I'm gonna try to avoid, um... I'm gonna see how long I can avoid... I guess, how long... No, I'll... Eh. I'll see how long, how long I can genuinely avoid... ...having to use... ...places exclusive to the Yakuza Underworld... ...in order to get... ...gear and stuff. Oh, hey! It's the Artful Dodger from Yakuza 3. Alright. Interesting way to introduce us to Tani Mora's gameplay. But alright. Okay. 
So, the glow... So, let's see. Akiyama is the speed focused character, and the power focused character was Taiga. So, Tanimura is going to be the roundhouse. He's going to be our technical focused character, which is why his block also doubles as a parry. Man, that feels more like a Dark Souls parry than a Yakuza parry, to be honest. It's kind of weird. Wait, this game came out like a year after Demon Souls in Japan. So maybe that's where it came from. Interesting. Ty Moore's fighting style is known as Turtle Shell. Named as such because it's focused on grabs and throws as well as defensive options. Which is weird because uh, I gave Ty I gave Saijima the black belt accessory, which increased the power of Ty Saijima's throws. Alright. Okay, that's an incredible taunt. That's... Okay, how's that for taunting someone? Just pull your gun and shoot in the air. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's effective, okay. Uh, yeah, it'll be effective in real life, though. Kaishi, Kamurocho Guard. Interesting. You know, it just occurred to me that I nicknamed this chapter The Gambler on my YouTube video, but I haven't actually had this guy gamble <coughs> in order to actually get past that, um, instance where we had to, you know, use gambling to progress the plot. Yeah. 
So Akiyama had the Hostess Maker number one minigame. And uh, Saijima had the Fight Maker minigame. Police Scanner is unique to Tanimura. Where it's basically just a series of radiant um, emerging crimes for him to solve in order for him to get money and prizes. Okay, so... Oh man, though, it feels really great not having to worry about police. I swear. Like, after the end of the last episode, I actually replayed the final chapter for uh, Saijima over again, so I could actually level him up and get pretty much the rest of his skills. Because... If you start the final, final section of Saijima's chapter, you do not have any free time or any real ability to travel around Kamurocho to finish his side content. You're pretty much boxed into going to meet Majima and Millennium Tower. So what you actually had to do was reach your base, but refuse to actually sleep. That will give you the free time you need to do stuff like complete the IR7 training, um, finish up my Saitama sub stories, complete fight maker, all that stuff. By doing all that, I managed to get uh, Saitama up to level 20 after he defeated Majima. いつもあれだ。今月勘弁してくださいよ。店の女が警察に逃げ込めねえことを知っててて、いろいろと Either complete, get good enough at playing the batting the game to amass 2,000 points in a row. You don't stockpile your points each and every game. To my other shock, why does it work that way? Or you have to get lucky and not accidentally waste one of the cover ritual lockers that contains one of the sacred wooden ash pieces that you need to progress master's training. The worst part, though, is the final aspect of uh, Saitama's training, which requires you to, again, go away to get something crafted. But the problem is, you speak Chinese. Interesting. Okay, that is interesting. But yeah, um, basically, Taijima, like, Saitama's training, his last two legs, is very obnoxious for two completely different reasons. Which is basically that, if you fail the last part of master's training you have to do all this the backtracking and all the crafting you already did in order to reinitiate it i found out the hard way and it wasn't fun or pleasant but man i wish i'd been able to complete it before so i can show you guys in the final episode of um taiga's story arc 
that the guy's one of the guy's training skills is learning how to do a shoryuken. I kid you not. It's beautiful. It gives you so much heat when you pull it off. そのまあ、ありがたいのは山々だけどな。Okay, so cop number three is on the tail of uh, Yasuko. Well, okay. As much as I hate to admit it, I have acquired proof that um, this main character absolutely did not. So honestly, what I'm looking at here is you have a character who works in Japan as a police officer who has strong ties to the Chinese community. And I'm just like... Oh, interesting. Okay. And I'm just like... <laughs> you really could have just... I've... That pretty much proves beyond the shadow of a doubt. Oh, that's cool. All right. Uh, oh god, I'm lost. I'm super lost. Um. Okay. Okay, there we go. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that you've proven to me that... You've proven to me right here. 
chase the guy. I'm a police officer. I have got to chase you! We proved to me by doing this is when. Okay. What you've proven to me by doing this is that. Oh my god. I keep losing my train of thought. Like, the point here is that Kaoru Sayama could have easily been slotted in this plot. Now I know that's relying almost entirely on the fact that this cop has ties to the Chinese community. Like, we, like, you can't even explain why she has a gambling addiction. Like, the whole point of the end of Yakuza 2 is that she was traumatized, is that she was horrified at seeing Kiryu and her brother Ryuji Goda trying to kill each other over something like, who gets to be the only dragon? And at the end of the day, she somehow loses her brother, and that's... Man... She loses her brother, and not even that long ago, she ended up losing her father. You could have easily had her suffer some sort of post-traumatic stress disorder for the whole affair. And then it's like, that eventually leads to a gambling addiction. That eventually leads to her status and reputation on the force being compromised due to her understandable, but still unprofessional behavior. And boom, there you go. <coughs> and there you go. Like, really straight up. I was going to wait until Tiny Morris' story was finished, but honestly, this game already showed right off the bat why Kairu could have just replaced him. Oh, there she is, Yasuko. Oh, okay, so he goes back farther than that. That's fair. But to be completely fair, not two days ago, um, not two days ago. Uh, Yakuza creator Nagaoshi explained that he was apprehensive about Kiryu joining any type of fighting game roster because the idea of Kiryu, he didn't want to see Kiryu fighting women. And another unfortunate reminder about these games is that they are made with approval of the Yakuza. They're actually genuinely made only with approval of the Yakuza in the first place. So as much as I...
much as I want to disagree otherwise, Tony Mora had to be a dude for the sake of fitting in the, with the Yakuza's traditional views on women and what they were allowed to do. So, I'm not going to hold Tani Mora's gender against him because that's never... I don't want to hold anyone's gender against him. I, I just... I just... This is really more about wanting to like a character who I feel like could have still been used and not really caring about the fact that Tani Mora is going to be a one-and-done type. We need to go to the docks. I, I lost my train of thought because I was too busy trying to figure out what exactly we were going to do. But we're getting a long form battle montage already. Interesting. just saying that it's just kind of feels like so it, when we're in Yakuza 3 when I said that it felt like uh, when it felt like the whole reason for the insipid <laughs> twin brother plot twist of uh, Shin with um, Joji Cosma is because it felt like the, the writers regretted killing off Shintaro Cosma as early as they did. And they wanted to get more use out of him and his voice actor. It feels like Tani Mora is or at least was the original plan behind Kaoru. Or at least what they would have done if they were able to keep using the character. I gotta be right back.
Had to go to the John. Not that many rank one abilities. Counter attack while you run down. Turn your feet when you run down. Drop kick. Sure. Quick strike step. Arm lock. Grab an enemy, then lock the arm. Okay. Sure. Yeah, this whole parry and grapple style of combat and gameplay is going to take some getting used to. Because admittedly, characters that like that are more about learning how to... They have a steeper learning curve than someone like... Um, than the previous two player characters do, I admit. So, anyway, my previous thoughts are... Jesus Christ. Like the parries are just okay. Come on, come on. Jeez, are you serious? Maybe going. Wait, what? Oh my god. Oh. Oh my god. Are you, what, 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 is there no end to this? So we have grapple combos, okay. Alright, alright, four. Double evasion, enhance quick steps, enhance grabs. Increase the power of all techniques, excuse Yes! Alright, how are the enemies in first state? Yeah!
That's gonna get nasty if it hits me. I'm on. I'm totally on fire. If I don't get out of here. Woo! Ooh, gamble of a lifetime. I also gotta say, this type of grappling combat does not fit the gameplay loop that, um... Avoid receiving any attacks while in the pairing stance, okay? Avoid receiving any attacks while in the parrying stance. Oh, enhanced parry. Okay. Oh, jeez. All right, go after the gun. Got to have the gun first. Okay, that looks sick. That's awesome looking. Oh my god.
That sounds interesting, but I'll take care of it later. Um, Oh, I see. So that's what happens to the. It's basically just the uh, the rush combo parry, or the Komak. Yeah, I like Taimora's version of the parry way more because it's literally it still has a window of error, but it gives you a better indication of what your parry window is. Shibata. Yeah. Hey, it's Arai. Oh, that's where you happen to you, man. That sucks. Oh, so even after stealing all that money, you decide not to skip town. So who are you working for? Ah, okay. なかなかいい女だ。So, yeah, the real Shibata is not a groveling yes man. Oh! Oh! Oh no! Oh, he's a mega creep! Oh my god! Yeah! No, what a gross piece of garbage. Thank you. Thank you. Anta mo yozumi da. Do do you koto da? Ah, arai. Shinpei shinai de kudasai. Ore mo keikaku ni uchi nan desu kara. 
The plan? No. Oh. This is gonna break Akiyama's heart super hard. So you were a toady. Because if you could be killed off this easily, you were not really all that important. Oh, so he was one of the traitors 25 years ago. Makes sense for you to know about the traitor stuff if you were one of the traitors. あんたは自分の出世のため、カズラギさんに手を貸した。でもそれ以来、あんたは事件の真相をネタに、カズラギさんに見返りを求めすぎた。さあね、なるほどね。カズラギさんにとって、今のあんたは邪魔者でしかない